of course, I have to say Happy Mother's Day. Amen? If, if nobody has said that yet, I'll, I'm going to be the first one. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. And I'll tell you what, what a blessing it is just to see all of you here. And some of you got more exercise just singing this hymn than you have all week. How about that? As you did love, one of these days, I want them to just hold that note lifted. Amen? See how long you can stay up there. We're up there with Pastor Ashley when we do that. Amen? <laughs> Pastor Ashley, would you open us in prayer, sir? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for this blessed morning we have, Lord, to gather together as your people. Lord, we uh, just rejoice in the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. We're thankful for uh, the Word of God that uh, gives us instructions on life and liberty and, and happiness in Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for our mothers here that represent today. We thank you for their strength and resolve. We thank you for their willingness to sacrifice and serve their families. And Lord, I pray you continue to bless them in a special way as we look forward to this service this morning. Lord, I also just pray for our choir. May all the singing be a sweet smell and savor for you. And Lord, I pray that as we sing from our own hearts, Lord, that we rejoice in all that you've done for us and what you're still doing. And we thank you. We also uh, pray for Pastor Miller, fill him with your spirit. Uh, use them in a special way this morning. Uh, help us to be mindful that the Word of God is true and that uh, you want us to be obedient to it. You want us to be doers of the Word, not only hearers, and that will be blessed. We thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's all be seated. Again, it's sure great to see you out this morning. We're always thankful for folks who think it's a good idea to come to church on Sunday. Amen. And we're also thankful for anybody who might be visiting for the first time. Do we have any introductions? Any introductions this morning? I was looking around, and I'm not sure I see anybody that I haven't met before. Uh, there's some guy with this, with this real short hair. Well, there's a few guys with short haircuts, so I better not go there. But one of them uh, is, uh, is a preacher who finally got, his, got, got right with the Lord and cut that hair. No, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> so good to have, by the way, uh, our college students back. I see some PCC students back and, uh, and some others, and thankful for that. Amen? Amen. So, any other, any other, anybody want to introduce anybody? Okay, well, let's do this then. Let's share a few quick announcements and we'll just continue with the service. Please notice the youth are hosting a bake sale today following the morning service. Please stop by the table and check out the wonderful baked goodies they have for sale. And then you can say, here, mama, look what I got you. Amen. You can even throw a little bit of flour on you and say, look what I made you. But that, no, you shouldn't do that. But hey, make sure you help us with this. And uh, chicken plate. You know, I don't know if it's right to talk all this food before we try to, you know, have a service. But chicken plate. The youth are selling tickets for uh, one of our favorite food fundraisers, grilled chicken. And I'll tell you. Uh, Delia has really stepped up and been a real blessing and a help uh, in, in getting this all going. This is something that was added kind of last minute, but we need your help to participate in making this a very uh, profitable uh, fundraiser for youth. Grilled chicken breast with cream sauce, mashed potatoes, <laughs> and I'm telling you, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Green beans, uh, dessert, and a drink for only 29, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> for only $8, and this is for next Sunday, uh, May 20th. And of course, uh, you may dine in or take out. Uh, this is another delicious way uh, to help get youth to camp and also to the mission field, amen? And uh, we need you to get your tickets today so that we have an idea of what we're uh, looking at. We're, we're going to sell tickets at the door, but it's so much more helpful for us to prepare for you if you can get your tickets today and have that already done, amen? All right, and a one-out, I'm going to ask Mrs. Miller if she'd come and, and share with us what you have for a one -out. She's looking at me like she's never been up here before. Have you seen that? Well, I'm I'm kind of almost in VBS mode, so I had to like transfer back and to then Awana you can mode. Go to VBS. So Awana this week is our last week. We've had a lot of kids who have learned a lot of verses, and they're really excited about this coming week because it's the Awana store. If you want to donate, it's not too late. Um, you can bring in some prizes, or if you want to just make a monetary donation, you can just put it in the offering and mark it Awana. And um, I, hear, I hear amen from the Awana leaders, so. 
We'll be setting up today so we know exactly what we have and we'll be ready for them, ready for Wednesday night. And Vacation Bible School, we're off to a good start. Um, Irma and Ron, um, Eloy got the cardboard for us a couple of weeks ago. And this week, um, Sonia came and traced her little heart out. And then yesterday, Brother Caleb stopped by and he did a bunch more tracing for us. So those of you who are supposed to be here and haven't been yet, you should be ashamed. <laughs> but I put in there a little blue slip um, showing the times that the church will be open for sure. Give me a call just in case nobody shows up and I decide to go get a steak lunch or something. But just come by anytime. And if you have a time that's not on the card, um, just call me because I will definitely open the church. Okay? Because VBS is less than a month and a half away. We're not panicking. Everything's good. <laughs> oh, I still need a first and second grade teacher. If God is laying it on your heart, that's why. Open up to 
little while ago, I asked my wife if Monty would be coming up, and, and Anita said, yes, she'll be handing out the prizes. I think we call them gifts, but we can call them prizes, amen? Good morning, everyone. Um, we do have just a little something for our mothers. I'm going to ask if uh, all our mommies that are here today and grandmas, uh, if you could please stand up so the children will know who they are going to hand the, the little gift to. We want to thank each and every one of you that are faithful in bringing your children to church and to help them to grow in God's word both here and at home. Thank you all. I'm going to ask my Sunday school class, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you would please come up so that you can help to distribute these. Thank you.
stand if you would before we collect our offering. 213, 213, because he lives, 213. <coughs> face tomorrow. Amen? I, I'll tell you what, uh, missionary, jail preacher, Brother Jaime, turn and face this crowd. Let them know what took place this morning, even before some of them got up, and then look to the Lord for us for the offering. Amen? Life. We had the privilege, me, Brother Garza, Casares, and Brother Caleb. Had a privilege to preach this morning, and seven souls got saved. Amen. Pressure, pressure. Garza preached 15 minutes. Casa the 15 minutes, and uh, Calais another 15 minutes. Tremendous message, and I enjoyed it. Seven souls. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's give him a big hand. Amen. What a blessing. And just, just for translation's sake, are you saying Caleb? Caleb. Caleb. All right. Caleb. Caleb. Was the first preacher this morning? Yes. Is he here this morning? Yeah, he's. Raise here. your hand, Caleb, right back there. He's uh, he's down here uh, uh, working for the government. <laughs> no, he's not the IRS. Don't worry. 
He is, uh, he is National Guard, and he has been a blessing. Been Amen. out door knocking with us, and then he went out uh, preaching this morning. What a blessing. Amen. Thankful Amen. for you guys. Amen. Let's, Let's look pray. to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you so much thanks, Lord, for another daylight. Thank you for the blessings, Lord. Thank you for those souls this morning. Lord, and this yes. morning I'm asking you, Lord, you bless every giver this morning. Help us, Lord, throughout the day. This is your day. Save souls. We love you, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. My son Hector will be playing for us. others she gives of herself.
What a blessing, what a blessing. And you know, this is one talented family for sure. I'm talking about the whole family. That includes dad also, good, good singer, amen? I would invite you to turn in your Bibles. Let's dismiss the children. That was Gilbert, wasn't it? Again, I thought it was the Lord speaking to me. I just... All right, five, seven, nine in your hymn book. Jesus loves me, yes, I know. Next time you get up and you hear somebody go, children. <laughs> it's not the Lord, it's Brother Gilbert. Amen. I would invite you to turn in your Bibles this morning to Proverbs. Yes, Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. I, I don't know. I'm just thinking this is probably the case. I'm probably not the only preacher preaching from Proverbs 31 this morning. I try to, uh, I love this entire chapter, of course, but I'm trying to, I try to be careful not to preach it every single Mother's Day, but the Lord sure laid this on my heart this morning for sure. Proverbs 31, please notice with me, verse 26. That's where we're going to start, verse 26, Proverbs 31, 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up, and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Father, we do thank you, we praise you. Already so special this morning, just as we come together, we come together to, to worship and magnify you and to, and to be a sweet-smelling savor to you. But we have, yes, uh, been encouraged and blessed. We're so thankful for our mothers. We're so thankful for their sacrifice, their continued prayers, their continued help. And even now, Lord, let us take a careful uh, account of scripture and allow us to appreciate how we can be a help to mothers. Have your way with us this morning, Lord, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. And yes, the title this morning is Helping Mothers to Be Good Mothers. Helping Mothers to Be Good Mothers. Now, typically, you know how it goes. Usually, we preach a message about how wonderful our mothers are, and they truly are, but how can we be a help and a blessing? We need to ask that question, and all of us need to be on board when it comes to being a help to mothers, helping mothers to be good mothers. Notice with me again, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 28. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband, I want to say that again, her husband also, and he praiseth her. I'll tell you what, if you don't get anything else out of this morning, you should get that. Amen? Husbands, you should be praising your wives, no doubt. The writer or collector of Proverbs brings this tremendous book to a close with a, a fabulous classic description of a great woman 
who is also a good wife. And she's also a good mother. You see, these words may have come from the mother of a king as she, she gave him guidelines concerning his future wife. This was written to some silly guy who needed to get some learning. Look at verse 1. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. And that's what all of this is about. Sometimes we start with the 10th verse, but everything that takes place in this chapter is about tra tra training and teaching and raising up a young man to appreciate a good woman, the right woman. Amen? A wife of noble character is declared to be worth far more than rubies. Look at verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? Her for her price is far above rubies. Now, I don't know how expensive rubies are, but I'm pretty sure they're more expensive than, you know, my glass that I have at home or some of the fake jewelry that some of us have. But I can tell you this, mothers are to be recognized, appreciated, valued. And yes, you ought to be, you ought to be pra praising the Lord for your mother. Women should not feel slighted if, uh, if someone were to declare that, that it's not so great a feat simply to give birth to a baby. I want to say this because I know we may even have some here today who had maybe an absentee mother growing up. I know of, of and of course we all don't need to unwrap all of this, but all of us know of situations where that, in fact, is the case. Uh, whether by chance or circumstance or just on purpose. But I'll tell you what, the great feat deserving of praise comes as a, as a mother becomes a good mother. And yes, it's right for this preacher to preach and challenge all of our mothers and prospective mothers to, to be a good mother, providing for your children and, and guiding and encouraging and leading them. Yes, I'll tell you, there is no doubt that behind anyone who has ever done anything in this world is a good mother who has been there bringing them along all the way. And so... With this great challenge that our mothers have to, to raise up our children to maturity and independence, we say thank you, praise God for you. And may I also say this, when you read Proverbs 31, know this, this is a standard that we ought to just rejoice and ask the Lord to help us to reach. Sometimes we're too careful to, to say, well, you know, not everybody can be like the Proverbs 31 woman. I'm here to tell you, not any of us can be all that we can be, but we need to strive to be all that we can be. So please notice with me, first of all, this morning, the great woman, the great woman, the good mother, does more than give birth to a baby. Boy, I, I don't want to dwell on this, but this really is true. Let's notice what makes a mother a mother and what truly constitutes a good mother. She is described as trustworthy. Look at verse 11. Her heart, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. You see, the good mother is one whose character is such that she can be depended on. And you know and I know, maybe even if you're, as you're thinking on this, you've seen this demonstrated over and over again. Uh, she is reliable and responsible. Her husband can put confidence in her and her children know her to be dependable. You know, men, you're the spiritual leader of your home, but I can tell you probably your children's first impression of what God is like is going to be in that close relationship that the child has with the mother. She is described as benevolent. 
Now, I can tell you when we mention benevolent, we often just think that that only has to do with, with strangers or, or others outside of the family. But we need to show a little bit of benevolence in the home, amen? Look at verse 12. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. I like that. Marriage is seen as a partnership in which, in which each spouse seeks to make a positive contribution toward the well-being of his or her companion, her children. She is benevolent. That means you have a right heart, a, a contrite heart towards the Lord, and you want to, you want to uh, just see the needs of others. Through the Lord's eyes. The good mother is, is good to her husband and good to her children. You know, I can tell you just even if this is aired in some public settings, they would be so bothered that we would even be challenging mothers this way. She knows how to spell the word love. And I'll tell you, she spells it every day with the letters G-I-V-E and the letters H-E-L-P. That's the good mother, the good mother. She is described as industrious. That's right. Again, look at verse 31. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. You see, it is significant that in the pre-Christian era, the great woman... And great mother is described as one who is not completely confined to the home. And we see this in verse 16, verse 18, verse 24. She is described as one whose work continues from, yes, it really is true, sun up to sundown. Amen? That's, that's the work of a mother. Verse 27 says, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. I can tell you that describes the good mother for sure. She is, and, and I want to make sure we take a moment and plant ourselves here because this is a very, very important point that isn't often made. Thank the Lord when we preach the word, important points will be made. Amen? She is described as having a good self-image. How about that? She is described as having a good self-image. Look at verse 23. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Well, why? Because of the kind of wife and mother this good mother is. It is significant that we, we get this. Modern uh, mindset is that, you know... You ought, to, you ought to think you're the greatest thing in the whole wide world. And then there are others who, who think that you should have very little self-image, if you will. What we have found through the years is that there are many mothers, and you know, we can think of all of the outside influences that might cause this, but there are, very, there are many mothers who have a low self-image. I think we not, ought not think too highly of ourselves, but we need to be careful not to think that we're inadequate or inept or unable to, to be uh, who we know we need to be. And we need to know this. And I'm thankful I can just say this. Over my 61 years, I have seen a little bit of a change, but I can go back to the 70s when it was almost embarrassing to admit that you were a stay-at-home mom. And you would say things like, well, people would talk about their career, and they would talk about this, and they would talk about school, and all of these things are great and important. And then a mother would step up and say, well, I'm just a housewife. I'm glad we don't even use that, that phrase too much anymore. I'm here to say you're to be recognized and honored for the hardest job in the whole wide world. Can I get an amen? amen. I'm glad I heard the men say amen because you know when you have to be Mr. Mom for a day, you can't wait till she gets back home. Amen? I'm telling you, what, make, what drives a man to work? 
one day at home. That's what does it. That's what does it. May I say this? You are valuable. You are important. You are so significant. Do not, do not have one of those self-images that maybe has been imposed on you by, yes, and I'm not going to name names, but there are outside sources who will tear down motherhood, who will de-emphasize the importance of motherhood. And there might have even been folks in your own family who continually told you that you weren't doing it right. You're not getting it done. You're not up, you know, for the task. Hey, listen, I, I, I got to tell you, if any of us, I'm, this is my group, and I'm here to say, we don't do that. Listen to me carefully. If you've got an issue, you pray about it, and you go to, in this case, the, your, your, your wife, or yes, even your mother, and you be a blessing and an encouragement, and you ask how you might be a help. You know, the last thing that she needs is is another word of disagreement, another folded, uh, you know, armed, you know, looking down the end of your nose type attitude. You want the job? You want to try it? You want to see what it's like? Be careful. We need to be making sure we're not the ones that are causing a a mother to have a low self-image. And may I say this? She is described as being compassionate. She is described as being compassionate. Look with me at verse 20. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands... To the needy, of course, yes. That's the heart of a mother. She is compassionate toward her husband. And may I say this, the Lord first, but toward her husband first, uh, here on this earth, uh, her children, and to those outside of the family circle. How many of us have just been overwhelmed and amazed at the benevolence that continues to flow from a compassionate mother? Matter of fact, She teaches us compassion. She shows us compassion. You know, it's one thing for somebody to tell you. It's another thing for you to see it. She makes constructive use of her tongue. Look with me, verse 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. I just got to say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. That's a good mother. That's a good mother. How sad it is that today we have this idea that that if a woman can, can speak as crass and disgusting as some guy on a merchant ship or something, that that's somehow you know, elevating uh, this person to, you know, to be equal. You know what? You don't, you don't, let me just say this. Remember there was a time when if somebody said something inappropriate around your mother or your wife, or yes, uh, your daughters, you would stop them right there and you'd say, No, you don't talk that way around this person. And yet now we hear some of the same kind of thing coming out of the out of the mouths of ladies. Ladies, that doesn't mean you've arrived for sure. That doesn't mean that, you know, you've entered into the 21st century. I can tell you there's some things you sure don't want to emulate. A good mother demonstrates that she has a, 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 a sweet spirit in her conversation. Proverbs has much to say about the use of the tongue. Uh, you know, most of the time when I'm talking about the tongue, I'm usually speaking to men, but it really is true that this is an issue for everyone today. The tongue can be used as a, as a soothing oil or to heal our injuries. The tongue can be used to encourage. 
the tongue truly can encourage the spirit. And it's like the notes of a trumpet. It's used to arouse people to action. The tongue is an amazing member. <laughs> a good mother should be a cheerleader to encourage her children. There's no doubt. We see this all the time. They, they face pressures, their children do, and they're growing up. And it's, it's as they grow up towards maturity that, a, that the, the words of a mother work so many wonders. Secondly, and may I just say, some would say, you're challenging mothers like uh, they're not already doing these things. That's what's so wonderful about preaching the word. I want to challenge mothers, but don't forget, there's some areas where we all need to step up and be a help to mothers. Helping mothers to be better mothers. How do we do that? Helping mothers to be better mothers. The wife must begin by helping herself to be a good mother. That's right. That's true. Consider, consider yourself and make certain, mom, that, that you are, and I want you to take this very personally, the good gift of God to your husband. Can I get an amen? Thank you for all three of those. You, think about this. You truly are, and you want to walk in this. You want to be the good gift of God to your husband. Proverbs 18.22 says, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. May I tell you what a high calling and what a great privilege it is for for mothers to be able to step up and see who they are in the Lord. You see, the gifts of God are, are always good. God wants to help you be one of the best gifts to your husband. Hey, listen, men, your wife is your best gift. Not your job, not somebody else who who compliments you, or, or, and I'm talking about any situation you might think of, but your wife is your very best gift. And I'm telling you, as the father of her children, we need to remember that. Only you can make certain that you, good mother, are God's gift to your husband. You recognize that, that this is what you need to do. Unto the Lord. Because there are some times when you don't feel so much like being a good gift to your husband. And I can tell you, <laughs> that's when you need to make sure for sure that you're doing it unto the Lord. Whatsoever we've done unto the least of these, we've done unto him. Amen. Be the real gift of God to your children. That's right. Your children need more than a biological source for their origin. Uh, they need to have a mother. How sad it is that in this crazy culture that we live in, this mixed up world that we live in, we have de-emphasized the importance of, yes, fatherhood for sure, and we'll talk about that in a few weeks, but motherhood, the actual work of the mother. You see, for you to treat yourself other than a gift of God to your children uh, is to consider your children as less than God's gifts to you. And you know, I can see just in your eyes and in your spirit how encouraged you are and how thankful you are for your children, even though they don't always do everything right, for sure. You see, this is... This is an opportunity for you to begin to build in them who they will be. And that when they take a wife or a husband, they'll know what's supposed to happen. You can begin the process of becoming a good mother uh, if you accept your children as gifts and, and trust that you have a responsibility given to you by God. I can tell you something. I'm, I, remember, 
what it was like for some of us uh, many, many years ago when, when we had our first child and we couldn't believe that they were going to let us take this thing home, you know? I mean, you mean we get to keep it? It's really ours? I mean, what a high calling. What a great responsibility. Thank you, mothers. If, if we'll determine at all times that, that we are a gift to our, to our families, uh, I'm talking to mothers, and that families, you are to be a gift to your mother, we'll, we'll be on the right track. We see that the husband has much to contribute toward helping his wife become a good and great mother. That's right. First of all, accept your wife, as I said a moment ago, as a precious gift from God. You say, well, wait a minute, we're going through some things. You know, who isn't? You know, I'm actually a little wore out with that one. You know, there's probably not even one family here who isn't going through some things. But if you don't start out up here and start men if, and, and start appreciating that your wife truly is a precious, precious gift. Hey, she's more precious than that bass boat, okay? <laughs> she is more precious than, than anybody in the workplace, anybody at school, any friend, any neighbor, anybody you're texting, anybody that's on social media. Your wife is your precious, dearest friend. And she is a gift from God. I knew I'd get a little bit rougher on guys. And I, it's, it's harder to preach at moms than it is dads. I'm just saying, okay? You choose your wife to be your companion and the mother of your children. We know of men who said, I would not ever even date someone that I didn't see the attributes of a good mother in, a good wife. The sad truth is some men thought, well, I can, I can go out and have fun with these women, but that wouldn't be the woman that I would marry. Shame on you for that, number one. Men, let me say this. She needs your help. No, not just to take out the trash. I'm, I, confession, I'm actually working on that one. I still can't figure out what color bucket I'm supposed to put stuff in, but, you know. <laughs> or what day I'm supposed to put it out. She needs your help. She needs your support, your, your encouragement. She needs your partnership. She doesn't need a silent partner anymore. Accept her. Hey, listen, accept her. I'm not saying accept her. No, accept her. And treat her as the gift of God to your heart and your life. She needs to be, she must be the most important human being on this planet to you. And if you have, and I, and I invite you to come to me and explain to me why that shouldn't be the case. Spiritual head of your home. Well, I just threw all this in for free because... I'm getting warmed up for Father's Day, amen? amen? Love your wife as Christ loved the church so sacrificially that he was willing to give himself for it on the cross. We know that great chapter, Ephesians chapter 5, all through. Matter of fact, let's turn there. It's okay to look at a scripture in the Bible. Ephesians 5. Let's begin with verse 25. Ephesians 5, 25. All 33 verses are your handbook for sure. Ephesians 5, 25. Are you ready? Have you ever heard me read this verse before? Husbands... Love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy 
and without blemish. I mean, what a high calling that your marriage demonstrates to the world, gives the world a picture of Christ's relationship to the church. And how sad it is that there are more who call themselves Christians that are getting divorced than those who aren't. How can that be? And what kind of a mixed message is that? You know, you know how it starts out. We'll use this language. We may begin with romantic love, but the real truth is you went and you saw her and you went, ah, that's the woman that I want. Are you still doing that 25, 35, 45 years later? It may start out as romantic love, and that's right, and God has wired us that way. But I'll tell you what draws men and women together in marriage. It's sacrificial love. Sacrificial love. This is love towards each other. And, and if we get this and understand that we're a gift to each other and to be good parents to our children who are a gift to us, and yes, they need to know and be shown that you are a good gift to them, we will begin to see some amazing things happen. Love your wives as you love your own body. We see that the scripture goes on to talk about that. The biblical concept of marriage is a one flesh relationship. Amen? Husband and wife are seen as a union of two personalities into one. Matter of fact, as you get older, you even start to look alike. Some of you even start to look like your dog. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> I've seen pictures. Paul declares that no man has ever hated his own flesh. But he nourishes and he cherishes it. A man is to love his wife. Who is the mother of his children? You know, whenever a preacher brings a message like this, I can tell you what's going through his mind because I happen to be one. We, we all know that we come short. We, we come up short. And some of us may have many regrets. But I can tell you in a new way, in a fresh way, beginning today take another step in the right direction. You say, well, you know what? I haven't, I haven't been that encouraging to my wife. I haven't been that helpful. Start today. I, I know that that may seem too simple. And you may shock her. She may pass out if you show up at flowers today. I don't know. And, of course, it'll be, it, she'll really pass out if you show up at flowers next week. But listen, let's do what we need to do, men. Treat your wife with reverence. Are you ready? With reverence, with respect. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Are you there? Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. I say, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together. Heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Men, if you do not treat your wife right, God doesn't answer, doesn't hear your prayers. That's what the Bible says. You say, well, wait a minute, I'm out soul winning. You better treat your wife right. Hey, listen, I'm helping that church. I'm part of the leadership. <laughs> if you're not taking care of business at home, if you're not treating your wife right, God's not hearing you. That's what the Bible teaches. Be grateful for your wife. How many remember the show, and this is a really great thing to do on Sunday morning, mention this show, but 
How many remember Bewitched? Anybody? I got to look at the 45 and older crowd. Can you believe that we thought that this real sweet show <laughs> that was so much better than a lot of what's on television today was about a witch at home? I mean, that's what, that's what the show was about. Can I tell you, when it, when it comes to, to watching some of these old shows, pay close attention to what is happening. Did you know that 90% of that time you had people complaining it was part of the laugh, part of the joke, part of the funny, uh, where Darren would actually be sitting in a bar somewhere complaining about his wife, okay? And we just kind of consider it part of the mix in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. How old am I for crying out loud? Oh, my. But you watch just about anything. And then, I think this show is 30 years old now, and then comes along the Simpsons, that, that teaches us that moms and dads are a bunch of goofs that don't know anything and haven't got a clue and they're the dumbest people on this planet and kids are to be rude to them and mean to them. By the way, I'll save that because I'm going to be talking to children in just a moment. But the real truth is we're to be grateful, men. We're to be grateful for our wives. Again, uh, verse 28. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also and praiseth her. We have, we have a problem when we default to complaints and bickering. And I can tell you this. You want to know how you can be escorted to the back of the church and maybe be counseled by a few deacons? Bad mouth your, your wife in front of me. What a mistake that you would make. We are to be grateful for our wives. Pray for your wife. The next time you've got something to say, pray. How about that? Well, I've got to tell you something. How about you pray? She needs your help. She's starving for your help. She, she, she will be shocked and surprised and overwhelmed and all these things, but go ahead and do it. It's the right thing to do. She needs the Lord's help, and the Lord wants to use you. Lift her up before God's throne of grace and ask him to, to help her with all her problems and challenges and, and all of her needs, and then say, Lord, make sure my 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 eyes are open and that I see what I'm supposed to do. I've saved the, less for, the, the best for last. Children. Children have much to contribute toward helping their mother become a good and great mother. Be thoughtful toward your mother. Be considerate of her as a person. I mean, as a regular human being. Quit treating her like she's some kind of a to-do robot. Do not be unkind to her or take her for granted. Some of these videos that we're all laughing at and think are so funny that have gone viral where uh, a, a little four-year-old is, is, is slamming the mother and talking her down. He probably got it from his daddy or whoever else is influencing him. I'm sad to say that in too many cases, that's not the dysfunctional home. That's the norm in too many cases today. I'll tell you what, for sure. And I'm talking to all of us because last time I checked, every one of us were, were somebody's children at one time. And we still may be. Become someone that your mother can be proud of and grateful for. Whatever happened to that standard? Guard against conducting yourself in such a manner as to embarrass your mother. Remember when that used to matter? Remember when that was enough for you to stop and say, Whoa, what would my mother think of me if I did this? How crazy is it that some of you think you're living these, this other life, yet you're plastering it all over Facebook and mother's reading it all. 
Be grateful. Be grateful for your mother. You see, she has many responsibilities. She has many duties. And you can be helpful to her by doing all that you can do to take care of yourself, to grow up, to do some of your own things. I'm, su I'm surprised that some of these uh, young people who, you know, they're, they're in their young 40s now, <laughs> and they still got to have mama do this and mama do that. I don't know who needs more help. A mama who's crazy enough to keep doing it? <laughs> or some, some adult who, and, and let me say, this needs to start early. We're, we're training our children to be independent, to make right decisions. And it's time that you help mom. Matter of fact, I've told my kids, you better figure out how you're going to take care of me and Anita. It's getting closer and closer to that time. You never know, amen? You guys just got super quiet over that. But I can tell you, children have a lot to do. There's an important role that they have. But, you know, I don't want to just beat this one to death. What would happen if you didn't have mama anymore? Some of you know. For some of us, mama has already stepped into eternity. But I can tell you, it's time for us to, to be all that we can be. Husbands, children, and yes, extended family and extended friends. Let's help mothers to be good mothers. Let's not tear them down anymore, but let's just build them up and let's be an encouragement. Before you throw out your opinion, throw out your hand and be a blessing and be a help. And I, and I want to say this. In this crowd, I can tell you, every time I preach a message along these lines, I've got to say thank you for surrogate mothers, for those who have stepped up and been a blessing and a help. Some of you who may have never even had children of your own, you are such a blessing and such a help. And we want to say thank you also to you. And as, I, as, and, and as we close, may I say this? Young lady, if you're looking to be married someday, the most important work that can take place right now, even before you think about that, is knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Because what will make all the difference, I mean all the difference, first of all, for you, for eternity, because when you trust him, you will spend eternity with him. But what will make all the difference in the, in the family that you should have in the future, Lord willing, will be that you know Christ as your Savior. Amen. And if you're here today and you're a mother and you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. Precious one, get saved today. You know, we're going to have so much to say about this subject over the next few weeks. Our great... Uh, uh, Sunday school class is focusing on this. We have our young adults and everybody in here. But the first most important decision you'll ever make, if you're already a mother, is to say yes to Jesus Christ. Be born again. Make sure that you know Christ as your Savior. And you know and I know that, that this, this high calling, this great privilege of being a mother is not always that fun. It can be tiring. It can be overwhelming at times. Let's just do our very best to take our appreciation beyond today and make sure that we appreciate in a very, very special way tomorrow and next week and next month and, and you know, on into the year our appreciation and thankfulness for mothers. Let's all stand.
Our precious Lord and Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you and we praise you, Lord. Thank you for mothers. We know this is a holiday. This is one day out of the year. I hope this won't be the last time we say thank you for mothers. If this is a day that brings back memories and causes you just to to take yourself back to a time when maybe long ago your mother just touched you in a special way, honor her by saying, yes, I want to be all that I can be to help mothers to be good mothers, to pray for them, to love them, to be an encouragement to them. Whether we're talking about our own wife, our own mother, our own daughter, whoever it may be, let us do that that work, that important work, helping mothers to be good mothers. And yes, friend, if you're not saved today, get saved. Trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Come forward. We'll show you how you can be saved. Speak to hearts, we pray in Jesus' name.